This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Hello, church. My name is Reverend Chad Delaney, and I'm glad to be with you. I'm the pastor of Manaway Center Christian Church. Um, I'll be serving today with our student pastor, Sarah Smith, um, and she's glad to be with you here too. Whether we gather in person or in spirit as we are today under the circumstances, we gather knowing that we are held together by the power of the Holy Spirit and that everyone is welcome here in this place, whether this is the first time that you're touching with Manaway Center Christian Church or you've been here your whole life, we're glad that everyone is here. As we worship in this new format today, I want to let you know that there's a few things that you can have with you. One is a candle. If you want to even press pause at this point and go get the things that I'm asking you to get, there's a candle and something to light it with. I have a Bible here. Um, so if you want to follow along in the scripture readings, you're welcome to do that. And also um, communion. So I have this fancy, wonderful thing that was made for me, but it has just a hamburger bun in it. That's what we had at home and some fruit punch um, that's in here. Um, this, that's right here. So if you want to gather those things, feel free to press pause so that you can take part in communion later, light a candle and read the scriptures. On this third Sunday in Lent, we are together continuing our theme of gathering around the table. Together we're exploring um, how to reimagine and reconnect with and re-engage what the table means to us, what communion means to us. And so this week we are seeking the guidance and the presence of the Holy Spirit. At the table we understand that the Holy Spirit is present with us. And the scripture today that we are going to explore says that the Holy Spirit will always be with us and remind us of everything that Jesus has said and taught. So let's begin to focus our hearts and our spirits together. We are here together across time and space, but we are still a community held together in the presence of God. We are a community seeking to have open minds and open hearts and open arms. We gather together not as perfect people, but as people on a journey seeking to be in relationship with God and with one another. Let's turn our minds and our hearts and our spirits from our worries, our fears, our anxieties, and light a candle to represent the presence of God and the power of the Holy Spirit that is with us. Our first scripture reading this morning is really a prayer from the psalmist in Psalm 139, verses 1 to 12. Listen, listen, listen for a word from God. O Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from far away. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, O Lord, you know it completely. You hem me in behind and before and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain it. Where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Sheol, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and settle at the farthest limits of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me and your right hand shall hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me and the light around me become night, even the darkness is not dark to you. The night is as bright as the day, for darkness is as light to you. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
Good morning, church. I am so sad to be so far away from you, but so excited to be worshiping with you, even if it's through this camera for a short amount of time. I hope that wherever you are in the world, you found yourself warm and well and well-loved. I know that I will be excited to get back together with you at Manaway Center as soon as we possibly can, but until then, I hope that you find meaning in this. Now, as we enter into this conversation with the divine, I invite you to be kind to your body and your spirit and assume a comfortable praying position. Let your shoulders fall away from your ears. Unclench your jaw and allow the muscles along your shoulders and spine to relax. Take a deep breath in and out as we enter into prayer. God, who finds us wherever we are, we cry out to you in a time of confusion. The world is shifting, and we feel the pressure to panic, to prepare, to isolate, and to wait. In the midst of the messy middle where we find our souls have started to crumble into fear, bolster us. Remind us that we are never alone. Prepare us to face the uncertainty with the certainty that you hold the whole world in your hands. God, who calls us to action and rest each in its own due time, we ask now for you to guide our hearts to which we need to partake in. Do you call us to the margins to help those who do not have the resources to weather the storm? Do you call us to enfold ourselves in the peace that comes from sustained intentional prayer? This Lenten season, we listen to your call. We follow your voice where you lead us. God of wonders, this season is full of surprises. The spring is dawning. Light peeks over the horizon, even in the darkest of nights. Help us sustain our hope until the morning, we pray. And hear us now, dear Lord, as united, although distantly apart, we pray the prayer that your Son taught us, praying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen, church. Our second scripture reading this morning is from the New Testament, the Gospel according to John, chapter 14, verses 15 to 27. Listen, listen, listen for a word from God. Jesus said, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides with you and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me because I live, you also will live. On that day you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me, and those who love me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. Judas, not Iscariot, said to him, Lord, how is it that you will reveal yourself to us and not to the world? Jesus answered him, Those who love me will keep my word, and my Father will love them, and we will come to them and make our home with them. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words, and the word that you hear is not mine, but it is from the Father who sent me. I have said these things to you while I am still with you, but the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. The word of God for the people of God. 
Thanks be to God. Let us pray together. Loving God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Both comforted and called. Chester Raccoon stood at the edge of the forest and cried. Now this is the very first line of one of the great little children's books that we would read to our kids. It's called The Kissing Hand by Audrey Penn. And in the book, Chester the raccoon wants to stay with his mother and his friends instead of going off to school for the very first time. It's something every kid can relate to of feeling nerves about getting on the bus or walking into the classroom. And so he stands on the edge of the forest and he's filled with worry. And his mother is standing close and nearby, knowing that this must happen, but also wanting to comfort him. So mom goes to the little guy at the edge of the forest and speaks gently with him. She tells him she has something for him that her mother gave to her and her mother before that and her mother before that. She takes his hand and kisses it, plop in the center of his palm. And she calls it his kissing hand. And that every time he would feel lonely or needed to feel someone close, all he needed to do was press his palm to his cheek and she would be there. The book says, Chester felt his mother's kiss rush from his hand, up his arm, and into his heart. He tingled with special warmth. Mom was always going to be there. And no matter how old or young we are, we resonate with that need to be known and loved and accompanied on this journey we call life. In the Gospel of John chapter 14, we meet up with Jesus and his disciples in some tender moments at the edge of their own forest. Jesus has just washed their feet in the upper room, a powerful moment in our sacred history. And so together they are sitting around that table, taking in these moments, unsure of of what is ahead of them. Now, Jesus knows that he will soon be gone, and Jesus has been warning them about this, but it's finally starting to set in for the disciples. They're all asking questions throughout this passage. When you look at chapter 13 and 14, Peter wants to know where Jesus is going. Philip wants wants Jesus to show them the Father. Judas wonders how Jesus would reveal himself. Each of them is trying to soak in every moment with Jesus and wondering how they're going to keep him with them. And of course, Jesus can feel their angst. With every breath he takes in this section of the gospel, with every word that he offers, Jesus is giving his last words of guidance, of wisdom and reassurance to them and, of course, to us today. In the face of this uncertainty, Jesus tells them that God is sending them an advocate, an advocate to shepherd them through this time. The word in Greek here is parakletos, and it means an advocate or a counselor, a helper, a consoler, a comforter, and means the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is actually probably one of the most least understood Ideas within the Christian faith. One of the, the, those notions that is really less understood with words and better understood with music and art and poetry. I mean, how do you really explain something that you can't see or touch or taste? But maybe with words like we just heard, a rush in the heart, tingling with special warmth from the story could be helpful. Or maybe Jesus' words that are used in the passage, those powerful words, love, home, truth, and peace, just start to get to the heart of it. Truly, the Holy Spirit is the very presence of God, the power of life and love made manifest in the world. 
The Holy Spirit is the fruits of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. All of those things made a home within us and in the world around us. The Holy Spirit is that little urging in your mind, that little inclination in your heart, the voice of truth given through a friend or through a stranger or even an enemy, that little voice nudging us towards goodness and love. And so Jesus says that this Holy Spirit, this advocate will come to comfort them and also to call them. It really is both. See, this Holy Spirit will come to them and remain with them always, reminding them of Jesus' words of comfort and consolation and peace. Words of peace spoken into their anxiousness in those moments. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Do not be afraid. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. Because I live, you also will live. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Jesus will not abandon them. And these words of life have resonated in the hearts and minds of faithful for generations, not just in that upper room, but even now, even today, calming our fears and giving courage to face whatever lies before us. I imagine these words going into their hands, up their arms, and into their hearts, tingling with special warmth. Yet we also see in this passage that the Holy Spirit comes to them also to call them to greater faithfulness. The Holy Spirit is a counselor and a helper, reminding them of the words and teachings of Jesus. These teachings that call everyone to give of themselves. If you love me, you will keep my commandments, Jesus says. If you love Jesus, you will follow him. Live out his teachings, continue his ministry of love and mercy and new life. Continue a ministry of servanthood that they've started together that welcomes everyone. Love God, love neighbor, love enemies. Be with the outcast and the stranger. Forgive, refrain from judgment, heal, serve. The Holy Spirit comes to live within us to make a home amongst us as we live and move and have our being in Jesus Christ. Here we are as a nation and a world, standing at the edge of the forest and worrying. Now, some of us may be more concerned than others or worrying more than others, yet all of us are involved in the intensity of this moment of history. There was a time in my life when I used to think that I'd reach this certain age and all the worrying would end. You know, we try to tell ourselves that we would reach some point of like ultimate stability. And at this point, you know, everything is fine after that. We we tell that lie to ourselves and then we'll no longer worry. But in truth, there's just life comes in ways that we can never imagine. There's always a new adventure, sometimes good and sometimes not so good. There's always a new struggle that awaits us. It's part of what it means to be human. There'll be something happening in the world around us or within ourselves that we cannot control. There'll be something happening with our vocation, our job, our financial situation. Maybe with our children, our parents, our family, Something inevitably emerges to challenge us. And all of us who are watching this understand very well what that means for us even today. And so we say to God, we cry out, come Holy Spirit, come. Come into our lives again, in our homes, at our desks, in our cars, in our classrooms, in our kitchens. And yes, at the table of the Lord, meet us here, O Holy Spirit. Fill us with your presence. Remind us again of who we are and who you are. Come comfort us and come call us. The World Council of Churches, 
whom we are studying in this time and this season, offers this time as the invocation of the Spirit. The table to be a place where we encounter the Holy Spirit in a powerful way so that the Holy Spirit might transform us and then make an impact on our everyday life, accompanying us always. The World Council of Churches says the Holy Spirit is the immeasurable strength of love. I love that. The immeasurable strength of love, which makes communion possible. We are joined together wherever we are in the immeasurable strength of the love of God. It makes communion possible. And the bond between the Lord's table and the mystery of God reveals the role of the Holy Spirit as that of the one who makes the historical words of Jesus present and alive. Would that be the church today would make the historical words of Jesus present and alive. Today, as we conclude this time together, we have a short presentation of just some of the teachings of Jesus that they might reverberate in your mind and in your spirit, that the Holy Spirit might speak something new to you from Jesus' words that he said so long ago. And as we partake of communion later, may Jesus' words stay with you there as well. Hear his comfort. Hear his call. In this time of uncertainty, may the Holy Spirit surround you and fill you, making Jesus' words come alive within you and around you now and always. Let us pray together to close. Holy Spirit, you are the comforter, the consoler, the helper. Move us and lead us now as your people. Still these storms that are around us and within us. Meet us wherever we are here at this table, our kitchen table, our end tables. As a human family, we face much uncertainty in these hours, in these days. Come near to us. Calm our fears, comfort us in our anxiousness. Give us courage and ingenuity. Give us boldness and creativity. Fill the distance between us with your love and your grace. Give us compassion and hearts full of mercy to confront these challenges, to remember the most vulnerable around us, to reach out to them, and to always respond to a world in need 
with your love. Melt us, mold us, fill us, use us, Spirit of the living God. Make your home among us now and always. Amen. As we gather together near and far and think about communion, we're mindful that we still gather as part of the body of the church and the body of Christ around Christ's table. Christ's table is not our own. Christ is the host and we are welcomed with open arms. For the purposes of this remote communion, I invite you into a thought experiment focused around the words that we hear every Sunday uh, right before communion. And as we recall, we remember that on the night when Jesus was betrayed, he met with his disciples in the upper room where he took bread, blessed it, broke it, and said, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When we do this, when we think about this, Jesus is inviting us to partake in the body of the church. What are the church's core values and beliefs that we want to partake in? Where do we receive bread for the journey of life? This week, I'd like for you to take a moment, perhaps pause the video and think about what has sustained you this week? Where have you seen the bread of life? Take a moment, gather your thoughts, and then when you're ready, we'll move on to the bread and the wine. In the same way, Jesus took the cup after supper, passed it to his disciples after pouring it, and said, Take and drink. This cup is the new covenant in my blood poured out for you. As often as you gather together, do this in remembrance of me. Jesus offered his disciples and all of us the cup of abundance, if only we would take it in his name. As we take this cup, we fill up on the hopes and messages of the church. We quench our thirst for knowledge, acceptance, and liberation. In this week, what has bolstered your well-being? Where have you felt God outpouring? Take a moment and think about it. And once you've got that feeling, come back to the table and we'll move on with communion. When we gather around this table to take communion, we often think about the community that's partaking with us. Be still and know that we are all present in the kingdom of God, as we are present in spirit and heart with you now. Will you pray with me? 
Lord, bless this bread and cup. May it symbolize your broken body given to us so that we might be made whole. May these emblems remind us of the power of your Holy Spirit, always present with us, speaking into our lives in your unending grace, forgiveness, and love that we know through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Church, as we gather together, we recall that on the night when Jesus met with his disciples in the upper room, he took bread, blessed it, and broke it and said, take and eat. This is my body given for you. As often as you gather together, do this in remembrance of me. And in a similar manner, Jesus took the cup, poured it and said, take and drink. This cup is the new covenant in me given for you. As often as you gather together, do this in remembrance of me. For as often as we eat this bread and we drink this cup, we proclaim the life, death, and resurrection of our Lord until he comes again. Remember, all are welcome at the Lord's table, near and far, and all means all. I want to thank you all for being with us today as we worship the living God. If you were blessed in this time together, feel free to share um, among family and friends. But where you are, be blessed, be safe, um, and know that the Holy Spirit and that God always surrounds you. As we bow for a closing prayer and benediction, I want to share with you these words from the members of the Grace Church in London, England. Let us bow for the benediction. God who made all things and is beyond our imagining, thank you for the gift of life, the gift of today, the gift of this time of worship. We thank you for Christ who came into our world to be with us. We thank you for the Holy Spirit who animates our lives and worship. Living God, we're here. You're here. May that be enough. Though we see dimly, though we know only in part, though you are a mystery, we long for you, we look for you, we wait for you. Amen. May the peace of Christ be with you now and always.